Here's how you can turn your headshots into 3D looking designs in Photoshop with a few beginner friendly adjustments. Importing your image into Photoshop will begin by creating a shape layer that you want your subject to pop out from. In this case, I'll create a circle. So going to the shape tools, I'll find the ellipse tool here. For the stroke setting, I'll set this to transparent and the fill does not matter. I'll now click and drag out, hold the shift key to create a perfect circle and the space bar to move that entire circle as I create it. Letting go, this will now create a new shape layer and to center this on the canvas, I'll press command or control A to select the entire canvas. I'll then activate the move tool by pressing V and then align horizontally and vertically like so. Pressing Command or Control D to deselect that. Now we need to go and place our subject within the shape. Since we can't really see the subject currently, we could click on the ellipse layer and just lower the opacity like so. And then we can resize our subject layer using the Move tool to position them within the shape as we would like. In this case, I just want the top bit of his hair to be sticking out of the shape like so. With that complete, I'll press the check mark to confirm those changes. Now clicking back to that shape layer, I'll bring the opacity to 100%. And then to ensure that this image fits within the contents of our shape layer, I'll drag it above that shape layer and then right click on the image layer and go to create clipping mask. Now this layer is forced to be visible within our shape layer, but to create the 3D effect, we need to duplicate our image and remove the background. With the image layer selected, I'll press Command or Control J to duplicate it. This duplicated image should not have a clipping mask, so you should see the entire thing. Now to make life easy, I'll use the Select Subject button, but I find that it works a little bit better when we use Cloud Detailed Results, so I'll go to any of my W shortcut tools, in this case the Quick Selection tool, and within the Select Subject button in the Options bar, I'll choose Cloud, and then click Select Subject while that image copy is highlighted in the Layers panel. With our active selection, which should be a little bit better because of the Cloud Detailed Results option, we can add a layer mask by clicking the Layer Mask icon. This will remove the background from that photo. Now we need to update this mask so that only the areas that we want to appear outside of our shape are going to be visible, which in this case is just the top of his hair here. So to do that, we need to define our circle so we can easily edit our mask. To create a selection of our circle that will allow us to basically color inside the lines, we can hold Command or Control and click on the Shape Layer thumbnail. This will turn your shape into a selection. Now clicking on our image layer mask, we'll grab the brush tool by pressing B. You can have any brush active, but I'll choose the soft round brush with the opacity and flow at 100%. We'll then set our foreground color to black to remove from the layer mask that we have selected in the layers panel. Now scaling up that brush, if we go and paint, we're not going to remove anything because we have the inside of the shape selected. Instead, we need to select everything outside of the shape which we can do easily by clicking on the Invert Selection option within the contextual taskbar. Now with everything set up as before, when I go and paint around the outer edge of my subject, it removes anything that is outside of the circle. We of course want to keep the top of his hair, so we're going to leave that as is. I'll press Command or Control D to deselect that. Now with this 3D effect created, we could add an outline to our shape if we would like. So I'll click on the shape layer, activate the shape tools by pressing U, and I'll just choose a stroke of white, for example. You can choose a width that works for you. To take this one step further, I would love to add a little drop shadow by double clicking on the shape layer to access the layer styles, and I'll go down to Drop Shadow to enable that. I'll set the angle in this case to be vertical, increase the distance so it pops out from the shape a little bit better, and increase the opacity like so. I'll click OK. Now, assuming that you want to use this on a website, for example, you probably don't want all of this extra space. So while you have a transparent background, and if you don't, you can just delete or disable the visibility of whatever your background layer is, we'll then go up to Image, Trim, and set this to Transparent with all of the Trim Away boxes enabled. I'll click OK. 
And now this will trim our photo so that it only fits the visible pixels. And we can now export this as a PNG and it's ready to use in any website or design.